Hi there, welcome to the Noah Presgrove case, looking at the latest news and discussions on the matter. Today, it appears that Noah Presgrove's brother, known as Dalen, has reached out to one of the members on the Noah Presgrove's Army Facebook page and answered some questions, revealing roughly the length of time Noah's body remained on the highway for until it was taken away. And normally you would think that as soon as police come on down, they would check the body, do what needs to be done, and then take it away as soon as possible so they can either take it to the hospital or do whatever, medical examiner, autopsy, because the quicker it's done, the quicker it's processed, the better and more accurate details that will come from it, whether it be to do with the cause of death, the condition of the body. And to be honest, in this case, it seems like things may have been slowed down a bit, but I believe the autopsy was done the day after, and it's like wasted chance, wasted opportunity, right? How you assess the body tomorrow could be different to how you would have assessed it on the day when it was fresh, not to sound negative. Now, some of that might be put into perspective with what I'm about to show you right now, but you can always let me know what you think down below in the comment section. And before we do go any further, if you do want to catch up on my earlier video today, granted a different case to do with Jay Slater, but potential interesting evidence being found all of a sudden, just like that. Evidence, possibly, of sunglasses, which look similar to what he wore when on holiday. If you want to see that up close, you want to see the photos and evidence, well, where that eye symbol is, click on that and then you'll find the link. Or if you want to scroll down below under this video and click on video description, you'll find the link there as well. And also down below, just in general, if you want to support this channel, there are links, for example, in my pinned comment in the comment section. With that being said and done, let's get straight into this Facebook post. See what this person has had to say, relaying information on from Dalen and the comments responses. Here we go. This was only posted six hours ago by Shannon. She says, Dalen finally reached out to me about the time frame on how long Noah's body was out there. He said him and his dad were relocated around nine-ish that morning, 9 a.m. He said they stayed there for a few hours he said he wasn't sure when Noah was taken, but he did say it was much later that afternoon. And, you know, with some hours passing on by, that can make a big difference. And the other questions would be, why does it take so long in general? Why can't they get on with it quicker? And as well, depending your stance on the matter, from what some people have claimed, that that hidden recorded footage after 5.15am in the morning, after Caden Pressey walked away from the scene when ordered to do so, and supposedly there was a police guy, a volunteer firefighter, and two clothed individuals, even though other people counter-claim that, but the original ones that are claiming that that's what happened in the footage, earlier on in the morning, you already had some kind of authoritative figures there, they did whatever, and then left didn't do anything to the body. Then an hour later, roughly 5.53 or so, a Tyler Hardy truck driver comes past the body, notices it, unclothed as well, maybe tampered with beforehand, likely. Then he calls the highway patrol, calls the police, then they come on down at around 6.18 a.m. And if not that, maximum 6.35 a.m. And then what? Not much. Then goes into the afternoon. That's Quite a few hours that have passed by, right? And if you need to, to do an autopsy on the body whilst it's fresh, with the remaining blood that's left, with the skin, uh, and, you know, all the medical terms, you've got to do it as soon as possible, right? Because if you do it later, where well, you get rigor mortis and things kicking on in, and, and so there was talk about liver mortis in this case, would that have been any different if it was done sooner, possibly? Anything else to highlight here? He said, Dalen, Dalen said, and his dad, relocated around nine in the morning. When you say relocated, what do you mean by that? Moved on from the scene, ordered to step back, to go elsewhere, and why would that be the case? Oh, you need to relocate whilst we get on with this, but by the way, we're going to take hours staring at a body. I mean, why did it take that long? Did they do it on purpose so that when an autopsy is done, it'll give off different results compared to if it was done fresh? Let me know your thoughts there. What are the conversations? What do people have to say about it to do with the afternoon? So Noah's body stayed on the highway from the moment he was dumped early in the morning till later on that afternoon. We'll look at the comments because I know some people said they wanted to see them last night. Linda, 
So who was there with him that time until he was removed? Does anyone have the correct time? Yeah, so did anyone stay with the body from start to finish, I wonder? I have not a clue. I can't see a deceased body laying on the side of the road from early morning hours until early mid-late afternoon hours. How many vehicles passed by him before he was actually taken away? Yeah, Shannon says, that's what Dalen said. Supposedly, 81, the highway was blocked off completely. And if it was blocked off completely, where would the road signs have been? Because you think about the highway, it covers a long stretch. And if there's no turnabout points up to a certain point, you need to put signs further down the road to say road closed. Because someone could go from Duncan all the way down to Terrell, uh, uh, down the 81 highway, and then realise, oh, can't go any further, and I'm so close by, so I've got to turn off. That's if you can. Shannon, I, what, had to have... Had to have, oh, the bloody spelling here, the wording. So you're saying that it's likely that the Oklahoma Highway Patrol were the ones there all all the time. Bianca, that's a different name. Normally it's Bianca, but we got Bianca. They had the highway blocked off for hours. I do mean hours once his body was found. It was late, late evening before the highway opened up. So how were you able to pass by it? Right, yeah, so who is Bianca? She seems to know. Is it because she was there at the time or she tried driving down? Is there a response? We'll see. I guess I just assumed his brother and dad stayed with Noah's body until he was taken away. Fair enough. Maybe the Oklahoma Highway Patrol was there the whole time, but who knows at this point, once again, I just assumed some family stayed with him. And to think, just standing about doing what as a body's nearby, it just seems a bit weird leaving it that long. You'd want to get on with it as soon as possible because of formal procedures. Unless you weren't in a rush because you didn't really want to be in a rush. Hmm. I read around 7 somewhere. I don't know if that's true or not. What, 7pm 7, 7 when it was closed or open? It was hot outside and they probably told them that they didn't know how long it would be before the ME got there. It still disgusts me and makes me wonder what really was going on. So with the police or the highway patrol delaying everything, or was it the ME trying to get on down there? They took their own time. That was on the podcast. I wanted to know where they got that time. That's why I asked his brother. They would have been waiting around 10 to 13 hours long. 10 to 13 hours long whilst a body lays on the highway. Now, I don't know if 10 to 13 hours long is the total time from when the body was dumped to when the police came on down and then eventually taken away. But still, 10 to 13 hours is way too long, especially when you've got the presence of authority at the scene. You can have a body that may have been laying somewhere in the woodlands for 10, 13 hours, maybe two days, maybe two months, and that would be have less suspicious because you wouldn't expect people to be there or to know it is there unless they walk in the area and then come across it and then they would report on it as soon as possible. In this case, it's on a bloody highway. It really stands out, doesn't it, right? I mean, I think it was said that they put sheeting over the body. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a very considerate. For 10 to 13 hours. No wonder why the sheeting soaked up some of the blood, I guess. What else? I haven't heard anything about that, but the thing is, why would his body just be left on the side of the road for hours? They got one screwed up timeline. Something about the ME got another call in Lawton, but I call BS. So the ME was supposed to be going on down to Noah's body, but then, oh, busy, got to do something else. Why couldn't have someone else? What else? It's protocol to not move a body or disturb the scene until the ME gives the okay to release the body. So... You can say what well, suggests that the ME are to blame. That's typical for any deceased person that did not pass from known natural causes, like in a hospice setting. Yeah, I get that about you can't move or disturb the body. But Tiffany, this is the thing. One minute Noah Presgrove is wearing shorts and the next minute he's not. Wow, magic trick. I don't think so. Tampering with the body, just like how Caden Pressy said himself. So even if the police or the Oklahoma Highway Patrol were like, we can't move the body, we've got to leave it for 10 to 13 hours whilst the ME finally get on down here. We don't want to disturb anything. We don't want to tamper with anything. Oh, but by the way, there's some people in the background that actually did earlier on. Well, that's great. Are we saying it's directly from the same type of people or the same set? Not exactly, 
But just in general, that term of, you know, normally when you come across a body, you've got to be careful with it. You don't want to harm it. You, you don't want to disturb it. No desecration, no tampering with evidence. You don't want to incriminate yourself if you do touch it. And obviously with the authorities, formal procedure, you've got to do what you've got to do and not go against it. But general public or authorities somewhere in between, someone or some people was supposedly responsible for tampering with the body by taking the shorts off Noah Presgrove, taking them away and replacing them with alternative shorts and folding them nearby. So can't disturb the, can't disturb the scene? Well, that's already too late because it already happened much earlier on. What else? Another call in Lawton, so they're just going to leave a deceased body on the side of the road whilst taking another call. See, this is the thing. If the Emmy was supposed to be assigned and going down to the Noah Presgrove case on the highway, and then on the way down they got a call to do with in Lawton about another situation, well, they should have, stun they should have still done Noah Presgrove first and then Lawton afterwards, unless they thought, well, Lawton's closer to where we are, so we'll do that first. Well, and how often do you get it where a body is laying on the highway or anywhere and it's been left there for far too long? How often does it happen? Is it normal? Let me know down below. What's this? Bianca, why won't you ever answer me? Oh, dodgy, dodgy. So Bianca is the one that left out one comment saying that the highway was blocked off for hours. I mean hours once his body was found, late evening before it opened up, and Bianca has not replied back. See, this is the problem, and maybe not everybody goes back to the comment thread or checks the responses, but if you're going to leave a comment and you're going to mention something very important, like a, a witness statement or a, a key answer, you got to follow it up, because if you don't, the credibility fades away. You can't answer this, you can't back that up. Maybe it's because the person's busy, maybe because they're very forgetful, but it's detrimental to the understanding of when you're trying to learn about something. So, what else? It's crazy that the ME didn't give the OK until later afternoon. I can't imagine leaving a deceased body on the side of the road whilst other vehicles passed by and saw it. Now, I, I guess a sheeting would have been put up, I don't know how discreet it would have been, but nevertheless, it would have been obvious to say, oh, look, something's gone on there. And if people have come and gone and still seen it throughout the day, they'd be thinking, what the hell's going on there? What else? Chaz, or unless, like it's been said, the highway could have been blocked off. I don't know. Shannon, yes, sir. Have more than one Emmy in Oklahoma. Let's see, for this reason. Yeah, fair enough. Well, Bianca claims she went to a birthday party around two and passed by and came back by round four, and they told her they were waiting on Emmy. However, I have asked her, told her how she was able to drive by him, and she won't answer me. Right, so Bianca seems to be a witness in the area, but has failed to give an explanation or a response. Very disappointing. It's odd to me that the Emmy didn't give the OK to remove the body, but not that it was held until the Emmy gave the OK. Only a few Emmys in the state, but a huge area that they cover, but allowing the body to be exposed for more than 12 hours is excessive, and that makes me wonder why exactly they didn't give the OK to move him. Hmm. So, my question is, even if there are limited MEs in the US or in different states, on average, when a body is found, for whatever reason, and it may be unknown, how long does it take until the body is taken away to the right place well, Yeah, the, for the ME to come on down? On average, what time does it take? Does it normally take about 10, 12 hours or less? Because if this one's abnormal, then obviously something else is going on, right? Chaz, who knows? It's like certain people supposedly know some things concerning this case, but no one wants to talk. And some people do talk a little bit and uh, tease and drop breadcrumbs, and it really doesn't help, does it? Holly, his father wasn't in his life growing up, so that's what, Victor Presgrove. And Noah wasn't raised with the brother, the half-brothers via sharing the same father. Uh, right, what else? Mm, let's step away from the personal feely side here. I know, hard, but officials left a corpse, yes. I am saying it, on the side of a highway from obviously 6am until the afternoon, when they were present, where I live, we get them in the refrigeration pretty quick, so as not to interfere with an autopsy coroner report. I wonder what their intention was with the, some new forensic initiative. That was exactly my whole point of finding out, because the heat will start the decomposition of the organs and tissues. 
yeah? As well as bodily fluids, of course, which in turn can mess up the autopsy findings. So the real question is, when we looked at the autopsy findings, how much different would they have been if it was done sooner and the body was taken away sooner? Would it have differed that much based on what we've seen? I'm not an expert, so I can't give my answer there, but if any of you can, feel free. Lynn, law enforcement knows this unless not there. What the hell? I'm disgusted. That's abuse of a corpse at that point. You've got to be dumber than a box of rocks. Box of rocks? I mean, you know, abuse of a corpse. What about the tampering as well, which happened earlier on, supposedly? What else do we have here? Was no protocol's murder strange? Insane that TMZ is calling out Jack's father five hours ago on YouTube. TMZ, I've heard of that. Some media group in the US. Can be quite full on. Has anyone seen this? I don't know if it's a recent video or not. I'm not going to click on it because of copyright, but it says that the TMZ are calling out Jack's father. Oh, Jack's father. What, Caleb Newton? Hmm. Lynn Tomlinson, why that long when they were immediately declaring a hit and run? Fishy for sure, for sure. Hmm. Oklahoma Highway Patrol were investigating and ruled out the hit and run and changed it to suspicious death. I gotta watch the whole show, I'm so glad it's getting the attention and this seems to be a group of at least some professionals. But they also can't legally move the body until cleared by the ME because they're liable for destruction of evidence. Well, it didn't stop some people, though, earlier on tampering with the body then. Hmm. Which there is no Todd on the autopsy. Because it was still clearly a crime scene, even when a decedent was clearly a suicide protocol, it's still treated as a crime scene. Okay, you know, watch full episodes. Yep, yep, yep. I had to reread this later afternoon, 4pm. What did you do all day if you categorised it as a hit and run? DFD? What the fuck does DFD mean? Determined it was not a hit and run, but a suspicious death. Hmm. Suspicious. So, to be honest, if it was ruled as a suspicious death, the public should have done more than that then. Suspicious death, you got the mystery, but the suspicion side as well. Ooh, I wonder who was responsible for this. I wonder what caused this and that. Hmm, where was he last seen? Oh, the party house. Who was he last seen by? Those people. Well, if it's a suspicious death and that's where he was last seen, maybe we need to go down there, have a look and ask the people and even check the property. But no, we don't do that. Yeah, that's a shame. Direct sunlight can significantly increase the body temperatures of the dissident. Yeah. Affect cooling weight of the body lead to over some stimulation, over over a stimulation. I don't know if that's been spelt correctly at the post mortem interval, suggesting the death occurred more recently than it actually did. Mm, I wonder if this was intentional part of the plan. You know, if it was intentional to dump the body on the highway for a reason, and then it was intentional to leave that body there long enough in order for it to appear more recent than when it actually happened at the party time. Ooh, that would be very dodgy. What else do we have? Guess we'll never know, sadly. They don't even have a Todd on the autopsy. Oh, what does Todd mean? Something of death. Uh, Time of death. Hey, there we go. I worked out on the spot. Todd means time of death on the autopsy report. Mm. Yeah, I get that. Modern suspicious, demonstrable failure, unwillingness to perform all legal and ethical duties, time to figure out exactly why these failures occurred. Seems to me there is more than one Emmy in Oklahoma City, or am I looking at it, staff and board members? I don't know if we can do that. Guess only one chief Emmy, ridiculous. Then you can see that photo there, general office, chief medical examiner, Eric Pfeiffer, if that's how you say the name. Yeah, not enough people, right? Heartbreaking, sad. Why was the deceased in Lawton more important than Noah? I would think the ME would complete one scene before going to another. Fair point. If the ME wasn't finishing up with Noah, then they should have had a different ME do the Lawton one. Makes absolutely no sense why you would leave a deceased person laying in the sun and heat to attend to another deceased person. I agree that it's abuse of a corpse. I'd see the state ME's office too. Completely deplorable, unprofessional. Take in mind... As well, whilst I'm reading through these comments, maybe not all of them will show up, but take in mind it's because this is recorded earlier on in the day. More people may react later. This was six hours ago when it was posted, so more people will comment after. But it's probably good timing of me catching up on it now, so there's no like 200 comments after, right? Final one, Holly. Not even remotely surprised it was more than obvious the ME was just another corrupt a-hole that 
purposely didn't do his job right when he decided to first come up with any kind of report only months after this case murder started getting looked at more publicly and internationally went out to report say cause of death undetermined the only thing i'm surprised by is that pos piece of sheet even actually documented all of Noah's horrific injuries. Nothing is baffling or strange about this unless one naively goes through life with rose-coloured glasses. I mean, the world has good and it has evil, period. Look around at what happens every single day. Parents murder their kids and kids murder their parents, for instance. I don't even question the whys. It just is. So knowing the kind of evil world we all live in and a corrupt ass, M.E., along with corrupt L.E. purposely leaving a body outside for hours is honestly not far-fetched, hard to understand at all. Fair enough. Yeah. And you always think when it comes to the small communities, dodgy things can happen. Especially when people know one another better, closer knit, closer tied, looking out for one another. So, there we go. Whenever we can adjust it to the latest comments, just to see if any more have popped up, you never know. Top comments, most recent. So sad, 39 minutes ago, afternoon. Yeah, how it seems to be. So, branching on from this to get an understanding and to apply it visually as for the length of time of how the body could have been dumped to how it was found to how it was left and then retrieved let's go on maps right now or some of the photos to really put it in perspective to tell a story one needs an image board and in a way that's what we've got more so as a slide show now not in any particular order well, arguably, in terms of location, it is in the correct order. But this being nighttime footage, you would know by now this was actually recently, several days ago now, it was taken 2024. A person actually drove down to the party house and drove around just so you could see what the area looks like. And it just so happened that waiting outside was a person. And we do have an up-close photo. They look like they're in a hazmat or a forensic suit. Why would they be wearing that and just standing about randomly, not even reacting to the car coming on down? Is a bit random. But you might wonder, why do we have this screenshot? Why do we have this photo right now? How do we apply it to what we've just heard about the news of Dalen explaining how long, roughly, Noah's body remained on the highway for and how detrimental it could have been to the final autopsy report, which could have given a different result. Or at least, you know, if you had to estimate time of death, that could be altered with negatively compared to if it was done fresh on the spot. Well, it comes back down to, is there a possibility that several people were in on it? Or indirectly, due to incompetence and delays, it actually benefited those responsible, right? So, there seems to be a bit of a consensus that when it comes to Noah's body, where it was found on the side of the highway, it's as if the body was dumped there because the only blood that was present was what you see here, which is that colour ingrained in the ground. There was a lack of it. Where was the rest of the blood? Was it three litres or something? Was it absorbed in the body? Or would it more than likely have been a pool of blood which collected elsewhere further down the highway, maybe closer to the property, even on site of the property? That's what we're going to try and figure out. And is there a way to finalise or confirm? Not really, but there's no harm in using a bit of common sense. You could say something happened near to or on site of the property, accident or not. I don't think it was an accident based off the brutality of those injuries sustained. And whilst, yes, accidents can lead to brutal injuries and fatal outcomes, of course, it just, I don't know, it just seems a bit dodgy in this one due to the defensiveness of people within the case, their threatening language and behaviour, how some may have supposedly tried silencing me, how stories haven't added up. There's too much dodginess in the background for it to be a simple accident, in my opinion. Could you say it's an accident which involves the people but they didn't mean to do it, but they panicked in the age that they were. They didn't know how to come forward or explain it to anyone. Could some of them have reached out to a person that they know of, an authority figure, and then the authority figure said, don't worry, we'll take care of this, you don't need to worry. So then the blame or the responsibility shifted on to higher-ups, and then they've done a job at keeping it quiet, and then that was passed on to others. Is it a chain reaction? You never know, right? But you can still say there's a form of foul play, a form of delaying the results, delaying the outcome, prolonging it so much that it could change the face of the outcome of the case and 
how Noah was perceived as dying and how he passed away, that type of situation. But to refer back to, let's just say you're on scene and it was this photo, as I said, what this screenshot wasn't in 2023, it's 2024, but it's the closest what we've got to the location, which is relevant to the case, of course, because I don't see anyone else driving down there and recording it. So whilst the odd person in the background on YouTube diminished the impact and the worth and value of this, it's very valuable, and we did say it would be used in the future, and boom, 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 that's exactly what's happened, right? So, with what we're looking at on screen, you take it back to, what, September 4th, 2023, Labor Day, early hours of Monday morning, 3 a.m. onwards, when Noah Presgrove is still alive, Jack Newton is awake, other party goes, the rest are, and they're in the kitchen area, and spread her out a little bit. Then whatever happens, happens to Noah in, what, in whatever order. And at some point, leaves. Then 3.41 a.m., 41 minutes after Caden has gone to sleep, that's when Jasmine announces Noah is missing. And she was on the front porch, which you can just see there where that light is above the truck. That's where the front door is, the porch, the steps. She would have been stood there, took the selfie, took the photo and said, Noah is missing. Was she stood there 10 to 11 minutes before that when Noah supposedly left? No, um, yes, no. Can't fully confirm it, but you know, as a possibility, if you're there at that spot, what's to say you weren't 10, 11 minutes earlier? Because on the basis that you were, you may have seen more than what you actually said. It just depends. And her eye contact looking off screen, was she distracted by something, makes you think. But whatever happened, happened to Noah. And this is the thing, whilst it might seem limited this, I, I don't, I don't want to drag it out too long because I've done separate videos where we try and look at the cause of death or other outcomes. I don't want to overlap too much. You can always look back at my previous videos if you want to hear more about the other stuff as to directly what happened to Noah. But at least supposedly between, uh, was it 3 a.m. and 3.15, that's when phones and social media was factory reset by some of the party goers. Is that 100% confirmed? No. Is it what Justin Roy said, who's been around on this case since almost day one? Yeah. So we can at least listen to it, not fully internalise it just yet, but at least apply it somehow on the basis that it's true. But the timing of it doesn't correlate to likely when Noah left the party. He was still at the party when that social media was deleted. So I think what people were getting at is, if you're going to clear up after yourself, is that because it's post-death of Noah Presgrove? And if that being the case, a 15-minute time difference of when Caden saw Noah in the kitchen of the house party upon going to sleep, within that 15-minute period, was Noah taken out and killed on site on the property, inside or outside? And that's what followed by the factory reset of the phones and social media. It could make you think that, but if that 3.30 timestamp was true and confirmed and reinforced, because it's not really being counted much at all, I've always heard it as 3.30 roughly when Noah Presgrove left the party. Maybe not everybody agrees with that and with what I say, but I've not really seen it contested. If anyone can contest it, and back it up with counterpoints and evidence, feel free to do so in the comment section. But on the basis that Noah left at 3.30 would mean he was still alive up to that point. So anything that happened before that, even if it was deemed suspicious, like deleting social media and factory resets and stuff, well, that's before the death of Noah, so it wouldn't link at all. So it must be to do with other activities, such as drinking, partying with firearms, not allowed to do that, deleting all the potential evidence so then they don't get caught out or get in trouble with the police. So, yeah, separate issue may be based off that. So, if Noah was leaving at 3.30, the property, right, how far did he make it outside until maybe somebody or some people caught up with him or until he succumbed or fell down to the ground and died due to some kind of fatal, brutal injuries, which could have been a beating of some sort? At what point? Just outside the property? Further down? Down the road up to the highway here? I mean... A bit unrelated, but what I find interesting is just there, can you see that tie mark? It's quite a long one, one skid mark. What caused that? Who caused that skid mark? I never got an answer. No one ever really responded back to it. I think it was quite interesting, to be honest. Did someone speed out the wheel spin when pulling out of the highway? Is it relevant to the time? I'm not too sure, if I'll be honest with you, because I don't know when street view imagery was taken, but this is just used 
so you can see it visually and put it in perspective. So down there, the party house, what we looked at, coming down this road, which would be heading east towards the highway. How far did Noah walk down here until he died and supposedly murdered? And then once that was done, down here, possibly blood, the rest of it, the, the remnants, the majority of it, on the basis of what we've been looking at today, that a body, a person was killed and then moved the body, disposed of, away from this land, this property, so it would avoid questions and avoid any searches being done, you know, working around that. You know, I don't want blood on my hands, I don't want blood on my property, get it away, shoo, like that. Okay, pick up the body, move it, oh, let's take it down the highway, let's take it down north, further down that way where his body was found, one mile away. Was that specific? Was that like, right, we need to dispose of the body, let's do it one mile away. Why didn't they do it further away? The further away you do it, the less it links to the party house. It could always link to the party house, of course, because that's where he was last seen, that's where he left, and then went wherever and died. But, you know, the further you are, you are away, the less likely you are to be, well, there's less factors which qualify you as a person of interest. Of course, you're still a person of interest in terms of you being the last one to see Noah and in terms of proximity of being Noah's friends. But in terms of proximity of the location of where he was found dead, that would be ticked off. You get what I'm saying? When it came to the Dylan Rounds case, what qualified Brenner as a person of interest to begin with was proximity to where no um, Proximity where Dylan Rounds was last seen, and in the end where he was actually killed at, that um, Brenner was also a person of interest because of proximity to where Dylan Rounds temporarily lived for a very short period of time, just a day or two, that's all, because of the farm. That Brenner qualified for being a person of interest because of closeness to Dylan, because they were kind of friends or they just worked for one another. So, well, Brenner worked for Dylan. So, you know, that working relationship there in a way, um, you know, those factors, if you can tick them off the list and cross them out more so, I shouldn't say tick, I should say cross out like I should have said earlier. If you tick, you cross them off the list, you become less of a candidate for a person of interest. So if you're thinking of, hmm, um, we're responsible for Noah Presgrove's death or we saw what happened and we don't want to get caught up in it, we're going to move the body as far away as possible. Now, in terms of the autopsy and any DNA, there was no DNA or anything found which showed anybody else handling the body. So, for Noah Presgrove's body to end up down the highway if it was dumped, right? And the basis that the body was dumped here, down the highway further north, one mile away from the party house, and no DNA came up as for people handling the body when moving it from point A to point B could imply that people were wearing gloves. And obviously, if you wear gloves, that can help prevent fingertips, touch-based DNA from getting onto the vital evidence or the actual person's body, right? Wearing gloves enables you to move about and handle stuff and you get away with it and you don't leave a trace, in terms of that exactly, because there's no fingerprints. The gloves cover your fingerprints. So, with that basis, you could say that the people who may have been responsible for taking out Noah, partygoers or not, knew what they were doing because they were like, oh, we've got some gloves. So they would have had to have gloves on hand. You know, um, not everybody will have gloves at hand, but someone did oh we'll use them we'll wear them then we can pick up the body and then we can dispose of it and then there's no fingerprints or dna is there a chance that maybe they weren't wearing gloves and dna touch based stuff could have been on the body but because of the length of time the body was out there for some of it expired or when the me did their autopsy report they didn't take that into consideration or didn't bother and turned a blind eye to it either way i guess Wasted opportunities, wasted chances on the basis, the concept of if Noah, if Noah's body was dumped at the highway. Um, seems likely, but it's not 100, 100% confirmed in that sense, right? And I can push it, I don't really want to push it too much because then it would be unnatural and then it could seem like one has an agenda. And as I said, I look at all different types of perspectives, but it seems like maybe a set of people or a group or a person 
for maybe we'll move the body over down here to stage it like something else happened. Oh, he, he was kicked out of a moving vehicle. He fell out of a vehicle. He was hitchhiking. He was walking. He got hit by a vehicle, right? And even that's been ruled out ever since. At the time, people who may not be experts with, you know, the, the medical injuries and all that, they just thought that, hmm, that's probably a good way to cover the true cause of death up. And in a way, they've done a decent enough job, even though that sounds negative, because, you know, the autopsy didn't give them a time of death, did they? They didn't give a direct conclusion as to how he died. It was like a bit mysterious death, a bit unknown. And to be honest, when you look at other factors of other cases in the past, which made time with the odd person like Caleb Newton, some of those deaths, like that seven-year-old girl was kind of a bit of a mystery as to how she fell in the water. How many more mysteries? How many more suspicious deaths does it need to take for maybe, I don't know, something to happen to give? But yeah, whoever responsible for possibly putting Noah's body here further benefited because of how long the body remained here for. Now, there might be a chance that the people that may have took out Noah Presgrove and also placed him down the highway, they may not be in direct contact or close to the M.E., that the ME themselves are just naturally incompetent or stretched because their services, they've got limited people, personnel present. And they chose to prioritise another location, Lawton, over the likes of Noah Presgrove. But if Noah Presgrove was on the top of the to-do list and yet they prioritise somewhere else, that does seem a little bit dodgy. It's like the ME were like, you know what, right, we're supposed to be going down here for Noah Presgrove, but we've got another case at hand and it's closer or it seems more important to us i'm sure no press grave can wait a few more hours we'll get there eventually mm, doesn't sound quite professional doesn't it it seems a bit weird so due to delays made then that further benefited those possibly responsible for the death and disposing of noah presgrove now Besides the killing, wouldn't it be desecration of a body as well? The charges of that, handling a body, handling a corpse, disposing of it, but not burying it. I guess it would fall somewhere underneath that umbrella term. So there'll be other charges as well if it, if it does actually go anywhere. But yeah, it's like maybe different people benefit, more so the ones responsible if it's on the murder case based situation. You know, they've done their thing to try and cover themselves up or clean up. Some people in between may have stepped in as well. And then later, due to the incompetence and delays by other third-party people and groups, not from the area, but coming on over from Oklahoma City, stretched in numbers, limited capacity, up delays, slow it down, leave the body out there even longer. Dale and Presgrove confirms that from what he said, passing it on to one of the members of the Facebook page. We're told to move away or go elsewhere at nine in the morning but the body was still there in the afternoon time yeah that doesn't sound too good that does it so even if it was just down to simple delays and oh we're busy hands full hands stretched not many people present we've got a small number of emmys or only one well it's, yeah okay but it's also like you know really throwing it away all these missed opportunities and like with the autopsy report, how due to how the body can set how um, the blood as well and all the other f medical terms and factors can be altered with with time, the longer the body remains out there for, the report can be vastly different compared to if it was done when fresh. And when you need a clear, direct answer as to what happened to Noah and to when it happened, you know, you need to do it as soon as possible but because it wasn't done as soon as possible. Wasted opportunity, right? Blood drying up, as you see there, and other factors too fading away, especially the possible, possible DNA and any evidence at the party house because it wasn't searched. So missed opportunities like that, you add it all up, it accumulates and you see how much damage has been done to the case, whether it's intentional or not, it's happened and it's not good. Now, what I wanted to do was move on to some comments of one of the previous videos that I did, although it may not directly correlate, still important and relevant to the case. And I said I was going to catch up from time to time, respond back to any questions, any key points on the spot. That's what I will do. Try and glance for it if need be, because there is quite a few. Skeptical, hi ref, James Brenner, to do with the Dylan Rounds case, the hearing. Oh, yeah, don't know. 
Yes, she posted a couple of hours ago. User Teresa says, 30 years, question mark, about time. I don't know if it was 30 years. I've not checked it out yet with James Brenner. I don't know if I will get time to cover it because really locked on with the Noah Presgrove case. Been a bit locked on with that alternative case in the background. We'll see how things go. And it depends how many people watch as well because, you know, you get a sign, you get a message when you're on the right path, you're on the right track and how people respond back. And because there's been a lot of positivity behind what we've been looking at recently, that's why I'm locking on like a gorilla holding on to a banana, okay? Skeptical says 12.6 up to 12.8K. So that's, I guess, to do with my subscriber count. I'm near to 13,000 subscribers, which is interesting. Happy, awesome, congratulations. Um, if you don't mind happy, I'll just say this in a country accent, only because, you know, just why not, okay? <laughs> not not in a disrespectful way, okay? But happy says, that's freaking awesome, man. Congratulations, Raph. I'm your subscriber account. I'm very happy for y'all. You've been doing an amazing job coming to know this case. I've said it before. I've said it again. If I scroll past your damn video, I've never seen a damn murder. But no person going to thank so much for taking the time to make these videos and live streams. You're a hell of a guy. Team Raph Strong. Yeah. There we go. Don't worry, I won't be doing that all the time. But I just thought it was quite fitting because it was a positive message. So shout out to Happy Shack. Yeah, I, I wanted to be able to showcase my higher pitch country accent because, you know, so many different ones. We've got bubbly waters. Looks like we've gone into deep waters because we've got some misinformation here. This must be a chat just for members. No, 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 bubbly waters. Not at all. It might be elsewhere, but it's not here. It's all under control. Incorrect. It's public. Maybe your perception by it was just for members is because it just so happened at a point, mainly members on this channel were actually communicating in the chat. If you want to make it more diverse, you want to spread out a little bit, you know, create variety, then people who aren't members, feel free to share your comments and thoughts in the live chat such as right now, I guess. But yeah, I mean, other people might do members only or subscriber only, but that's normally done to filter out the toxicity. But in my mind, I find it very important to have the chat public. So every single person watches in the background or, you know, visibly present, they witness anything that does happen. So if a bad person comes on in, if a fake account comes on in, everybody sees it. That's why it's important. If you limit the flow of people who can comment and maybe who can view the video, if the video was restricted further, and, you know, even if you restricted the comments or the live chat, it means that non-members and fake people may not be able to engage the same way. So whilst you are suppressing it and blocking it out, you kind of pulling cotton wool over your eyes and digging your head into the sand, unaware of the dark forces out there. What you need to do is allow the dark forces in naturally so you see who they are, what they are, and what they're all about. And then you clean the cancer, right? We've come across some prats and plums recently. There was an impersonation account of World Like Life India or Very Good Day, Namaste. It looked like there's a person trying to interpret it, World Like Life, but it just so happens that my Indian accent is even better than his. Or do not do that How do you do that to me? You've been following me on Instagram. How dare you? You know, I might be posting lots of photos online, but you should not be coming at me. You may be in a hurry for gunny, but I will want you to piss off or get my black belt and I whip you silly, you naughty little boy. See, this is the thing. We can go through all kinds of accents. We can go through all kinds of impersonations if necessary. When it came to the Dylan Rounds case, the dysfunctional misfits and disease-ridden humans over there, some of the community, I could impersonate them just like that. He got the damn right! Oh, I'm Raph, I'm still obsessed with you secretly. I'm thinking about you all day. Exactly. And many more voices along the way of all kinds. But let's just focus on with the comments. What's this? Wondering which one will flip first to get lesser charges. The party host, best friend Jack Newton. The party host being Avery Combs, the best friend Jack Newton. The relative, the parent, the uncle, dad, hired hand, so-called Texas boys. Hmm, I wonder. Who will flip first? Will someone flip first if it means that they can benefit and throw others under the bus? Possibly. Was Caden Pressy really innocent and sleeping? Or was he the smart one knowing... The first one that talks gets the better deal. 
Who videoed the authorities at body dump scene? Wonder if they gave video to a variety of agencies or just a sheriff deputy of Oklahoma Highway Patrol or FBI. Did video go to news reporters as well? Well, all I can say is when it comes to Caden Pressey and what he said, he's been a bit more vocal, a bit more public, but he's been consistent with what he said. Now, some doubters could say, well, of course, present yourself as appropriate as possible, be as consistent as possible, and... and um, alienate people and make them believe in you. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know what else I can say because, you know, all you can do is hope to trust in what some of the witnesses have to say who were there at the scene. And along the way, a range of them haven't really been reliable due to the different stories and contradictions, but Caden Pressey has remained consistent. So that's all you can go off from. If there was like pure text-based evidence video footage of, you know, let's say there was video footage at the timestamp of when Caden said he was asleep and someone was recording him asleep, then you could say that's solid proof and evidence, but who's going to be recording that at the time? Probably not. So a little bit unfortunate. What was the response? I kind of think there was a camera on the semi-truck. Most trucking companies now have them on the trucks. I mean, are we talking about Tyler Hardy, his truck, when driving past the body? Is that so we see it from the true point of view of Tyler Hardy to make sure that what he said is consistent or what he supposedly has said? John says, I think it's possible that the final straw between Noah and Jack Newton is when Noah wrecked the UTV. Okay. Jack all but admitted uh, when he said that he was sleeping when Noah took his UTV. I think that's a possibility. Well, the bit about Jack claiming to be asleep, what, 2 a.m. in the morning? Because if so, Caden Pressy said Jack never went to sleep. So that kind of counters that. I think that's a possibility that Noah ended up dead, not from the wreck of the UTV, but after the wreck. After several fights, arguments over the weekend, when Jack woke up and found out that his UTV has been taken without his permission and wrecked, that enraged Jack Newton. But I thought the points were countered that Jack Newton was lying about going to sleep. He was actually awake. He was in the kitchen with Noah 3 a.m. in the morning onwards, and that's when the UTV tipped over, supposedly. Then to find out that his girlfriend, who had Noah had already argued over, had showered with, cleaned Noah after the wreck, bit jealousy maybe. I'm also curious as to where the UTV was parked when it returned from the wreck. Was it in the barn? Was it besides or behind one of those buildings? Oops, sorry. Click on reply. Excellent comment. Agree on many points. So it tells me that the party, the parties involved, uh, the party goes, you mean, either drove the ATV down or very near the railroad tracks or Noah may have possibly been killed on the railroad tracks. Do you know what? I'm surprised it didn't go as extreme as, oh, let's put Noah in a vehicle and put him on the railway tracks and then leave him there. So if a train hits him, it would be seen as, you know, accidental or suicide. Mm, I'm surprised no one did that. What else? Possibly in Kill Railroad. I feel this is only because of the black debris found in Noah's road rash burns could be creosote, I you say that name. It's used to preserve the railroad ties, also found on railway tracks. Interesting. No one has confirmed what the black residue was. It's also, this just occurred to me. Were there any trains travelling on the tracks that night? Could have been a train that stopped. One psychic reader mentioned a hobo. Uh, when, when you said hobo and trains, I was thinking of hobo shoestring, that case. So many what-ifs. I wish law enforcement would give us an update, something, anything. Either they can't give updates because, one, there's just no updates to give, or two, because of legal reasons, it's too sensitive, or number three, they do have something, but they don't want to reveal it because it could help the case. Sounds a bit odd, that, doesn't it? Noel, how come you don't click on the comments after reading the original post? I'd like to know how many people respond and what I have to say could be very informative. Just saying. Well, don't worry. All under control. We looked at the comments today. We're looking at comments right now. We're even looking at your comment. But, you know, the video that I did yesterday, I did look at the comments. Maybe not every single one of every single post, but just know that when I did it the time before, the videos were very long. And I have to be conscious of the time of the videos to an extent because the longer it is, the, the more the file size, the less likely it is for me to be able to save the project because of storage and upload time. If a video is over one hour long let's say one hour, 15 minutes onwards, I'm screwed because YouTube screw me over. The upload speed is abysmal. 
It says waiting to upload. Last night was an absolute nightmare. It seemed likely that I wouldn't have been able to upload it in time, but somehow some miracle happened, right? So, yeah, got to be careful with timing. It'd be ironic if this video turns out to be quite long. Apologies in advance. Glenn, shout out to Glenn. Lindy, Lindy Chelsea. Okay. I wonder if Jack organised the demise or perhaps teach Noah a lesson, a beating, but never laid a finger on him, but he set it up uh, for someone else to do the dirty work. Maybe. I totally agree. I guess it comes down to what connection does Jack have with the other party goers at the scene? Did he pay anyone? Pay anyone to say, right, do this, or can you do this because you owe me a favour? I wonder. I'm wondering if it all went a bit too far. And there was not an intention to unalive him, but the ones giving the beating were under influence of cocaine. Noah said in spirit communication, the ones responsible were coke heads they offered him. So that's a psychic reading. Mm. That thought crossed my mind as well. He was beer belly old man. <laughs> beer belly man. White t-shirt. I don't know. They said that I think it was a Texas boy. Looked more like a man then. Or hired hand. Mm. He probably was run over by that ATV more than once, so more so intentional. Mm. Was Caleb Newton the dumb, the dump truck for those people dumping guns, golf clubs off because a dead kid a mile from their house party? Imagine a friend at your door asking you to get rid of guns, golf clubs, etc. When you know your son in the location hours before and one of H of a favor of free, a, a free BJ to clean up after the killer, perhaps. What? What? So you come on over. Hey, 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 can can you take these guns? Can you take these items? Hey, Daddy, I, I'll give you a special favour. What? Uh-oh. I'm going a bit dodgy here. Golf club hitting someone from moving truck, walking with a broken ribs, perhaps. Mm. And then we got this person. Someone needs to ask Caden Pressy what was the atmosphere like at the party before Caden went to sleep. Fair point. Ask Caden questions like, was Noah upset, having fun, arguing with anyone, etc.? Jack or anyone else who Noah was hanging around with, was he still drinking? Maybe the authorities put that out there. If anyone comes forward, then they'll be charged. Mm, fair point. Agree. Caden hasn't been as vocal recently, and probably for good reason. Uh, keeping safe, maybe. Jack could not have beaten up Noah by himself, even if Noah was drunk, unless he had someone helping him. Golf clubs, maybe. Smear fishing. I've not seen smear fishing for a bit. He might not be able to, but if he hit him with the golf club, then he would be able to beat him up by himself, so incapacitate and then finish off. Happy Shack. Got to watch this recap. Missed three to four of the live streams. Oh my God, Happy Shack. What the hell are you doing, girl? You need to get a grip of yourself and the priorities, man. Don't know about the rest of the guys, but I actually can't wait to check out my notifications to what Mr. Ref has for us each day. Like an addiction. Uh-oh. Don't worry, Happy Shack. I'm also known as Dr. Ref, so if you need an addiction treating, the door is open. And don't worry, the door doesn't even squeak because the hinges are locked on, man. Unlike the other one where I kept shutting shut. I know people keep talking about my doorknob being too high up. I don't care. Maybe people in the US have their knobs lower down. My knob is much higher up. That's just because of the doors, how they're designed in the UK. Desire. I missed this. That's all right. There is that secret video. I wonder if that was the person who saved the photos, but can't the cops get data off any app, no matter what? And isn't it true that no matter what you delete, it's going to be able to be found? Pro probably, yeah. Just my thoughts about the videos that are deleted. Allegedly, Jack was out there earlier to go fishing with his dad, but then Jack states he didn't wake up till six. I mean, um, so let's say four in the morning when Jack, well, Jack referred to four in the morning, that's when Noah passed away. And it was 5.15 in the morning when Jack got back to the house. So before 5.15, for Jack to announce the death of Noah, Jack would have been at the highway. What was Jack doing at the highway? Was that in the process of going to that fishing trip or not? Because I don't remember it linking unless there was additional text elsewhere earlier. Ronald, I, I like to listen to these videos at night. They put me to sleep. Well, that's good to know, Ronald, if it's calming, but... Just as a heads up, maybe this video tonight may wake you up like a nightmare with some of those loud voices that I did, unfortunately. 
Ah, there we go. TMZ is covering Noah's case. This is good news. Ah, this must be the one what we saw on Facebook earlier where they were putting the blame on Caleb, supposedly, Jack's dad. Well, I'll definitely take a look at that. I'll probably do a video on that tomorrow just because, you know, I've done enough videos at the moment, but we'll get there. It's been nine months. Hopefully Noah's family has the help they need. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your videos. I've never done Facebook, so I appreciate the coverage. You're welcome, Jennifer. That's good to know. Cleo as well. Jan, excellent video. Appreciate that. You would think if somebody was being drugged and beaten that you'd be able to hear Noah hollering or screaming at the party house because, you know, it had to have happened on the land or the building behind the house, if not the house. Oklahoma police need to all be fired if not put in jail because, you know, by looking at Noah on the side of the road, that could tell a truck did not do it to him. And as well, being left there for that long, that's also questionable too from what we've heard of today. So why couldn't they go ahead and do an investigation anyway and check the house and the land because they knew he had been on that land earlier? Yeah, last scene, person of interest at the scene, and as well, treated as a suspicious death, so you'd have to work backwards from where the last person was. At Pri, the one thing I can't seem to figure out is, was he dead or alive when the girls showered him off? And was Jack really asleep when his girlfriend was in the shower with Noah? Um, well, at least from what Caden Pressy said, Jack wasn't asleep and at around 3 a.m. at least. Steph, ah, oh, I missed it live. Well, there's always next time, it's okay. Maybe I'm a little off what I'm about to say. I think person taking all those pictures of Noah knew something was up. Let's, let me say that there was a lot of pics of Noah, but no one else. Also, a video of him getting slapped in the face yet. Not really anyone else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why no one else except Noah? Why just Noah? So the footage of Noah remained, but what? The footage of everybody else was deleted in that factory reset. Is that what it means? And what device, whose phone was used when recording the footage of Noah Presgrove getting slapped? Was it Noah's own phone or somebody else's? Anyway, excellent observation now that you mention it. But what if the real person behind uh, asked this person to take the videos, pictures, etc., making Kishi look like they knew something, yet totally unaware of what was about to go down. Funny how some people's minds work. Self-serving manipulator, manipulators. At times they can be so good at what they do, but by the time you realise what's going on, it's too late, you've already been played. I was pretty sure now, by watching other videos, clues just keep screaming certain ones if you get me. Mm. It's just a small chance that the person behind the camera was the one responsible. That'd be even more creepy. Oh, we got Jam, the Jam Man, back. I tried to explore the Avery Combs and Carter Combs felonous father, but I can't find those records or mugshots anymore. Oh, have, have they been taken down, hidden? Robert Jody Combs, Nakona, Texas, 30 minutes away. In the mix of all this coverage of online posts, I reposted it. It was noted one of the dads had been arrested for meth, which dad for the love of me, I can't remember which platform or channel it was on then. Then when the video showed the guy in the white looking outfit at the party house, I immediately thought active, get off, active meth lab or that note, two separate sidekicks readings conveyed as Noah possibly seeing a drug deal or something he wasn't supposed to see. That was even applied to the Dylan Rounds case, but it turned out not to be true. Not saying that is what's happening the night of the party, but why four days later is a guy at the party house wearing a white suit? So many puzzling questions, many half-trees, tons of lies. What in the same hell really happened to Noah? I've never heard that saying before. What was so bad that Noah had to die for it? Oh yeah, what what was that? Um, I don't know if it was um, it was it was someone that said you know say a certain line in the country accent or so. What was it? Hell, hell, hello, Mister Feller with the white pillar, yellow pillar. Blah, 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 my God, golly, I don't know how he said. And then a, a skeptical said, um, "What was it? Daddy put a spoon in my mouth." Oops, I think I got the wrong voice for that one. What, put a spoon in my mouth. Why does it remind people of good times? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably something else. Probably misinterpreted it. Oops. This guy. Wasn't the golf clubs found in the scrap pile that Jack Caden and some other guy was loading up scrap for Jack because Caden made a comment to Jack, didn't react. Caden didn't think anything until later after the talk of the missing clubs. I mean, supposedly, yeah. I'll need to do a video on that just to try and reconfirm it, of course. Steph, also, who... Are the kids at that party knew something from the police department? Someone. I'm not too sure. Um, there was no moon. What is the normal rate time of travel from leaving the party house on foot to the highway scene? Good questions, though, sometimes damps. 
Dalen said he did lend Noah golf clubs in recent podcasts. Yeah, significant injuries are crazy. I can't wrap my mind around it. It's time to call a real professional. Doesn't seem like the police in the place have enough brains. <laughs> I saw that. I don't have a screenshot. Okay, I do wonder about this rumor, especially after the break. King up, out oh, Carter Combs and Jack Newton. That looks like a corn fed man. <laughs> uh, what the one in the, the white shirt just in front what we talked about earlier. Who who would Avery Combs or Carter Combs call? Let's explore that. Sharia Sh- 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 Allen, were these kids threatened by the killer to erase their phones or are these kids really this sick? Mm, interesting questions. We got Ten gallon, keep going, ref. Will do. You have excellent commentary and raise fascinating questions. Appreciate that. That's good. I don't have Facebook, so your dissection of the conversation is very helpful. That's good to know. We've got Sunny. Shout out to Sunny last night for support on the channel. Maria as well. Steffi also. I left comment. Oh, and Badger Life too. Steffi also. I left comment on other video. If you all watch all videos, it's pretty much saying who they are. I bet I'm right. Okay, right. This one, good evening. Here in Texas and in Oklahoma, those orange signs are letting you know that there are alarm signal lines, cable and con- conduits or conduct. And the light green or tan bar that's metal under the sign is a telephone box. So thanks for explaining that. This will be in relation to, I guess, when we're looking at the footage of the house. Remember that recent footage when we saw those signs and I did that screenshot. So does a telephone box, does that have any significance? I mean... Maybe I'm reading this wrong. When you say telephone box, do you actually mean a box you can get a phone out and call someone? Or you mean the lines of a telephone box which connects to the phones inside of the house? Because it was like, um, when I in the UK, when you get a telephone box, it's actually a box which you can walk into and then call somebody. So if that was the case there, do you think Noah Presgrove tried using the telephone box to reach out for help? I wonder if he had time. Linda, no matter if they delete it or not, it's still there. The FBI API can get everything off everyone's phone at any time. They probably already got it, just ducks in the row. And last but not least, I need to set up PayPal. Would like to donate, get membership, super chat, all that good stuff. But my phone was stolen. Sorry to hear that. Had to buy a new one. Once I get it set up, you'll know. So appreciate that. Take your time. No rush. And yep, looks like we've reached the end of the comments. So hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did join late to this live premiere, feel free to rewind back to the beginning where I actually revealed it as to what a person who was in contact with Dale and Presgrove's brother to Noah Presgrove had to say about the the length and time of how long Noah's body was left on the highway for and how it was really treated and handled with, which was really slow, delayed and quite disappointing and detrimental to the case in the investigation. Was it done on purpose to benefit one another or to indirectly benefit those responsible out there? Maybe. And yeah, I did a little deep reconstruction of, you know, visually how it would appear on screen from here to there and how long it took. I mean, was there any other witnesses that drove by or attempted to go down the highway at the time of when it was supposedly closed off? You saw that Bianca, Bianca, spelt differently, saying, oh yeah, it was closed till, what, seven? Or, you know, it was for hours really late into the evening. By by seven, it was reopened, but she never responded. She didn't, you know, add on with any more context behind it or answer questions, which is very unfortunate. But then again, um, this post was recent, so maybe they're not had time to respond back yet. Maybe later on they will. But if there's any of you that were present there or driving down the highway and saw it closed off or remember when it was exactly opened, you can leave your thoughts down below. That can help. And yeah, I think we'll leave it there for now. You want to catch my earlier video to do with key evidence being found, possibly, to do with a different case? Click on the eye symbol. If you want to catch up on my other videos, my full playlist is available where the eye symbol is. And if you do want to support this channel, links are down below pinned. So that being said, thanks for watching. Appreciate your patience. See you next time. Goodbye for now.